Hey, this is Argonoid. I'm trying out Lamasoft the Jeff Minter story. Uh, as some of you may have seen on my channel already, I have covered quite a few of the Lamasoft games, but having been a big fan of Jeff Minter and Lamasoft since about uh, 1991, I think. Um, this is mostly a collection of his 8 bit games, which I've barely played at all, and I will be playing some of those later on. Um, there are also the Atari ST 16-bit games and Tempest 2000 for the Jaguar, which is one of the games he's most known for. Um, this initial video is going to be slightly negative because um, I noticed this issue the other day when a clip was posted to, twi to Twitter of um, the Atari ST game Llamatron, and uh, it turns out that the version of Llamatron in this collection has basically messed up sound effects that are just kind of wrong, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, I don't want to discourage anyone from getting this collection. Uh, it's one game out of uh, many in this collection, and you know I've, I've always been a big supporter of you know, Lamasoft and Jeff Minter. Um, so you know I want to you know show that you know this isn't necessarily the best version of that particular game, but there are many other games in this collection that are certainly worth getting this for. But I just want to cover what are the differences, so let's uh, try this out. So, uh, this is an interactive documentary um, about you know, Jeff Minter's career. Uh, I'm going to skip just to the games for now. Uh, so, these are all the 8-bit uh, games that he worked on. And if we get towards the end of the list, we have uh, Llamatron 2112, which is the first Llamasoft game I played when I was a kid. Um, which was, as it says here, on the Atari ST computer. Now, the version of the game they're using on here is not an emulation of the original ST version. It's an emulation of a fal uh, of a Atari Jaguar conversion port. Uh, I'm not sure who actually made this conversion. Um, but I've seen videos of the Jaguar version and it has the same issues in terms of sound effects. So let's start the game and see uh, what happens. I'm also going to change the settings as well actually. If I go to settings I've got uh, screen mode, I want full screen. I don't really want the border. Uh, game settings. So one addition this does have which is quite nice is the twin stick mode. So in the original game, this was on a computer that only had, um, you know, joysticks as the controllers, and you would normally just play the game with one joystick, and that meant shooting one direction, moving in the other another direction, was slightly tricky. You had to hold down a button to keep essentially lock the firing direction. Um, the game did support two joysticks for twin stick shooting, but that was kind of awkward to to use. So it's quite nice they've actually enabled this twin stick mode. So you can just uh, shoot with the left stick, and or rather move the left stick and shoot with the right stick. So let's try that. So straight off, the sounds on this menu screen are weird. Like that's not how it sounded on the original. Um, there has been some suggestion that some sounds have been changed because of copyright reasons, and I don't know which sounds that's the case for, uh, but as we'll see in the game, I think that can't explain everything about the sound effects because um, a lot of them just seem to be sound played at the wrong pitch or playing the wrong sound effects at the wrong time. Um, I'm going to play... Well, that's interesting, actually. It's only allowing uh, one-player mode. There is a two-player mode and a one-player with CPU assist. I think because I've got twin-stick mode on, it's not allowing those other modes because maybe it doesn't work in those modes. It definitely wouldn't work in two-player mode. Um, so let's just start the game. So one of the first thing, things I noticed in the clip I saw and heard is the shooting, effects, the shooting sound effects is weirdly high-pitched. 
Now, it seems like a minor thing, but like, uh, Jeff Minter is known for his sound effects. And, um, it's not an improvement. It's, you know, partly this is like, obviously, I've played the game for many hours on the Atari ST growing up, and that's what I know. But I do feel this is objectively worse. Um, but, this sound effect here, when you start the level and end the level, again, it just sounds weird and different. It, it's, it, it seems like the sound, same effect, but it's just not the same. It's like too fast or too slow. It's not quite clear what's going on. Again, that's different. It's like similar, it's like weird, it's like being in some kind of weird dream that's like familiar but different. And it's hard to put my finger exactly on what's wrong. Like some things seem to be too fast in terms of the pitch. Some things seem too slow, like way too slow. And what I'm going to do in a moment... What, I'm do what I'll do in a moment is compare this with the actual ST version. Like again, the, the screaming mound of blocks. Again, it, it seems like the same sound effect, but it's just the wrong speed, and it's just strange. Now, I don't understand why, when the level ends and when the level starts, it plays that sound effect, the kind of warping sound effect, but. Let's just see if this happens again. It didn't happen that time. There often seems to be an explosion sound effect when the level starts and ends, and that doesn't make any sense because there's no explosion happening. Oh, there's an explosion when suddenly... Oh, there, there, that, that, there's like a kind of explosion. That, again, it's the same thing. Again, this laser, it sounds like the same sound effect too fast. But then it was a different pitch. Like, why? I, I don't understand why. Now, I don't want to kind of, like, shit on the developers or whatever. Like, they've basically, from what I understand, um, you know, got, as far as I'm aware, perfect emulations of the 8-bit games and of Tempest 2000 on the Jaguar. Um, and from what I understand, because this port of this game on the Jaguar already existed, then that's what they used, and it may not have been practical for them to do to an Atari ST emulator in this collection. Um, but it has the very unfortunate side effect. I, I was hoping this would be the definitive version of the game. Like, you know, it, it's got benefits in terms of frame rate as an addition to, you know, uh, the controls. But you wouldn't say, for example, that the definitive version of, let's say, like Lord of the Rings films is like a version that's in, that you'd expect to be in, you know, 4K, but it's actually in like you know 480p, and the colours are all wrong. It's got some kind of weird colour issue. Um, so it, it's quite disappointing. Um, but at the same time, I recognise that you know the developers aren't necessarily in the position to fix this. Um, now there is, there are two other ST games in this collection. Um, one is Revenge of the Mutant Camels, which I've also played a lot in the past. And I have tried that earlier, and it's it's not like this. It's like it's not perfect. The sounds are they sound a bit wrong, but not in the same way as this. Like they're fine mostly, I think. Um, there is also Super Grid Runner, which I've never played on the ST, so I can't comment on whether the sounds in that are okay. Um, but this is the disappointing one. Um, what I'm going to do now is stop this for a moment and load up the ST version and we'll see how the sound effects differ. Okay, this is the Atari ST version of Llamatron. 
this is the one megabyte version of the game. So there was another version uh, designed for Atari STs with 512 kilobytes RAM, which had a slightly lower sound effects quality, but um, that's not related to the sound effects issues we've seen in the version from the Jeff Minter collection or the Jeff Minter story. Um, so if we go to the title screen, So immediately very clear that this is a different set of sound effects from the uh, version in the collection. So one thing I've noticed in the collection as well, besides many sound effects seeming quite different, is there often don't be sound, seem to be sound effects when enemies are hit. Like it seems to miss a lot of them. Like here, I'm hitting enemies, and it seems like each one is producing a distinct sound effect, the same sound effect. Um, whereas I was shooting enemies in the other one, and often there's just silence. And again, I assume this must be some issue of when the Django version is ported, but uh, it's quite a fundamental thing in a shooter that when you shoot something, it makes a noise. Because I don't have the advantage of the twin stick controls from the collection, uh, I am having to use the technique of uh, you basically walk in a certain direction to shoot in that direction, and you can hold down the fire button to carry on shooting in that direction. So it does result in some awkward moments where you have to, um, let's say you're being chased by an enemy and you've got to turn around to try and shoot at it, so you can aim in that direction before starting to walk back in the other direction to move away from it. Uh, which can lead to problems. Now again, you may notice there are sounds playing with different pitches in this game. So the oh yeah sound when you pick up the extra life. Um, I believe there are two different pitches for that, but the thing is, in the collection, the two pitches are different from the pitches in this one, and again, it doesn't really make any sense why. level you have to uh, touch the umbrella to stop it raining and you can't uh, win the level without that. These guys here, these white guys are kind of invincible so you just have to try and kill the other enemies without uh, killing the white, you know, the white guys which you can't kill. So one other note, one other change I've noticed in the collection is more an understandable one, uh, understandable one, which is that the Coke cans in the second level uh, don't have the Coke logo on, on them anymore, which is you know fair enough. 
So I think that's enough to demonstrate that there is uh, an unfortunate difference in the sound effects between the two versions. Um, as I said, I don't, I don't want to kind of discourage people from getting the collection. Um, I think it's sort of a worthwhile thing. And um, I'm looking forward to trying out the 8-bit games and some of the other ones I've not tried before. Um, I tried the emulation of Tempest 2000 earlier, and um, uh, the it's got quite nice, you know, 60 hertz mode, so it's got a higher frame rate than, than the original. Um, also, something that's worth looking out for is that on Steam at the moment, uh, the collection is currently on sale. So in in UK prices, it's 24.99, but there's actually a discounted bundle, which includes the collection and both uh, Tempest 4000 and uh, Aka R, which is Lama Soft's latest game, and that collection is cheaper at uh, about £21 than the collection on its own. So even though I had already had both those games, um, obviously I bought the cheaper version, and obviously for anyone who doesn't already own those games, then uh, it's, uh, it's a bit of a no-brainer really. Um, so I'll leave it there for now. Um, that's my kind of summary of the audio issues, but uh, I'll do another video soon. Uh, hopefully a bit more of a kind of positive one, um, looking at the other parts of the collection and the other games in the collection.